acid rain. Well, Dr. Atkinson is looking at uh, a weeping angel statue made of marble, which is calcium carbonate, essentially, and that's susceptible to acid rain. Acid rain is sulfuric, sulfurous, nitric and nitrous acids produced by mankind, anthropogenic, if you will. These trees are dead and dying because the potassium, calcium and uh, magnesium ions have been washed away and the aluminium ions in the rock have been released, killing the trees. The fish are dead. Aluminium ions stops fish's gills working properly. These aluminium statues have been corroded by acid rain. And these people here are suffering from bronchitis, emphysema and asthma from the acid gases produced. Where did that statue go? Oh, there it is. The iron railings have corroded from acid rain and this iron bridge looks like it could go any second. What can save Dr. Atkinson now? Acid rain, I hear you cry. Oh, look, there's the statue on the bridge. If only it would rain. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is a little dramatic, this acid rain. It isn't actually green blobs that fall from the sky and it could be mist or snow. So acid precipitation is another way of looking at it. Acidic water can corrode the inside of pipes and cause poisoning to people drinking that water. But some metals aren't susceptible to acid rain. Oh look, there's a tiny little weeping angel made of gold. Gold isn't susceptible to acid rain. So anything with gold leaf on it should be safe. Let's squash it. <laughs> oh dearie me, giant angels. So even before modern man started to mess with the planet's atmosphere, rain has always been naturally acidic. Carbon dioxide and water present in the atmosphere reacted together to produce carbonic acid, H2CO3. You need to memorise that. That's a weak acid. Now when I say mostly, volcanoes and lightning strikes can also produce acid gases that dissolve in water to make acid rain. Oh, that looks a bit like a sick fish. It's an equilibrium, so it can be uh, manipulated using Le Chatelier's principle. More or less carbon dioxide can be dissolved. And the carbonic acid, it's a weak acid, so it drops off a proton. It doesn't do that much, it's only partially dissociated, so it has a very low Ka, acid dissociation constant. All right, acid deposition. There are two sorts, wet and dry. The wet, well, that's acid rain. It's also acid snow and acid fog as well. Dry deposition, well, that's where the gases stick onto existing smoke particles or dust particles. You don't need water for that, and it may later dissolve. So where does the anthropogenic, where does the man-made acid gases come from? Well, fossil fuels, burning coal and oil, they contain sulfur and that releases, and that gets released when the coal or oil is burnt. Sulfur makes sulfur dioxide, an acidic gas. And when that dissolves in water, you can make sulfurous acid, H2SO3. You have to memorise that. Now you've probably heard of sulfuric acid. Well, sulfuric acid can be made if you add another equation just in there. So if you turn the SO2 into SO3, that's sulfur trioxide, and then that equation at the bottom needs to be altered just a little bit, add an oxygen, okay, that turns to sulfurous acid. Now we've made sulfuric acid. It's a strong acid. Nitrogen is the other chemical. Now you're thinking nitrogen, how's that acidic? Well, if, if you heat and you squash air, for example, in an internal combustion engine, it can react. One rather disturbing fact is when they detonated the first nuclear bomb, a lot of people thought that the nitrogen and oxygen in the air would be heated and squashed and react and engulf the entire planet, producing nitrogen oxides which would go on to make acid rain, not that anyone would be here to care about it. Some more equations, nitrogen monoxide, NO, can be formed thus. 
you can make nitrogen dioxide, NO2. That's the brown gas that you can see hanging over polluted cities. So you guessed it, just like SO2 can react to form SO3 by adding an oxygen, so can nitrogen monoxide turn into nitrogen dioxide. There's the equation. So let's see how this would make acid rain. Well, the gas dissolves into water with a little bit of oxygen and makes nitric acid. Oh, that's a strong acid. Quite corrosive. Another reaction that it seems that you need to know to form nitric acid is a couple of nitrogen dioxides and water will make nitric acid and nitrous acid. HNO3 is nitrous acid, one less oxygen. Yes, I know there's a lot of equations. No, no one knows specifically which ones you actually have to learn. It's a new course, isn't it? So the statue is calcium carbonate, and when it's in the acid rain, the statue is attacked, if you will, by the acid rain. Bits of it dissolve. It makes water and carbon dioxide. OK, let's write down the balanced chemical equation. CaCO3, calcium carbonate, uh, better known as marble. Let's choose sulfuric acid for my acid rain. And that makes calcium sulfate. Now, calcium sulfate, is it a solid? Is it aqueous? Well, it, it barely dissolves. It's plaster Paris. So I've put solid. But it is bigger than calcium carbonate. Calcium sulfate is bigger, and it dissolves a little bit better. So that's why the statue gets uh, eroded, if you will because the product is bigger and dissolves. Nitric acid is also in acid rain. That makes calcium nitrate. Now that's definitely soluble, definitely AQ. Oh, words with friends. So that's for the wet deposition, the ones that involve rain, snow or fog or wet deposition. Let's look at dry deposition. That's a soot or dust. Now that needs a little oxygen to happen. So calcium carbonate, some sulfur dioxide. I'm not sure if that should be a solid or a gas because it's actually a gas stuck onto a solid particle. I think the IV want you to say gas. And that again makes this calcium sulfate, which is bigger and dissolves a little bit better. So my statue starts to disappear. This is Eros, the first ever statue made of aluminium, and it's protected by a very thin layer of aluminium oxide, naturally occurring. Now, when acid rain lands on it, for example, nitric acid, the oxide layer dissolves and makes little holes in it. Aluminium is then susceptible, makes aluminium nitrate and water. Now, I'm not convinced this is true because this statue... Uh, wasn't cleaned for 50 years, and when they did, there was no sign of acid corrosion. I've never heard of uh, aluminium statues being susceptible to acid rain. And the last building material is iron. That can react dry or wet with acid. Both times it makes iron sulfate, if you've got sulfuric acid. Iron sulfate's crumbly. And it doesn't have the, uh, the strength of iron, so the iron just uh, washes away once it's become iron sulfate. Let's look at the effect of acid rain on nature and man. So the dots represent the smoke with acid particles or dust with acid particles on it. That blocks up the leaf's stomata and that can kill the leaf. Acid rain washes away essential nutrients like calcium, magnesium and potassium ions from the soil leaving the tree deficient in them. It also causes rocks to dissolve and release aluminium ions. They're taken up by the tree roots and are toxic to the tree. Aluminium ions are also taken up by fish and it causes the fish to die. It messes with their respiratory system. Nitrates from acid rain, the nitric acid, can cause algal blooms, otherwise known as eutrophication. And when it comes to you and me, Emphysema, bronchitis, asthma has been linked to acidic particles in the air and copper, aluminium and lead ions 
can be released from pipes into the drinking water if the water is acidic. There was a famous disaster in England, in Camelford, where they accidentally made the water acidic in the pipes. People's hair turned green. They were worried about a mental illness. It was, it was a real tragedy. And on that happy note, goodbye.